I'm here to tell you about the fantastic Name the Game series from Australian Football Video. Now there's over 200 games available, including final series, state games, night premierships and the best home and away matches of the 91 and 92 seasons. Not just the highlights, not just the last quarter, but a hundred minutes of top footy action. So pick up your free catalogue at any Brasher store. And remember, footy brings out the best in a person. A history-making season. A year that had everything. The great marks. The sensational goals. A year where record crowds witnessed a year to remember. That was the season, 1993. Hi, I'm Drew Morford. Welcome to That Was The Season, 1993. I'm in the video section here of Channel 7 in Melbourne and this is the engine room. This is where we've recorded all the best footy highlights of the season just past. And what a season it's been. It was the season when Adelaide made the finals for the first time. Two of the interstate teams made the finals, made it a national competition for sure. Gary Ablett, five times he kicked ten or more goals in a game and he topped the century for the first time. Well, uh, we've had an even competition. There have been the controversies. What about Nicky Winmar and his contractual dispute with St Kilda? There were coaches sacked, coaches appointed. Ron Barassi came back to the fold. And who would have thought, going back to the pre-season, that 75,000 people would turn up for the night grand final in the Fosters Cup? That was just one of the many highlights, and that was the season 1993. It might not have had the same impact as firewalking, but as a pre-season preparation, Terry Wheeler's decision to take his players skydiving won the 1993 award for novelty. At least he provided his men with the murky depths of Port Phillip Bay as a soft landing zone. The man behind the firewalking fiasco of 1992, Graham Corns, took his Adelaide Crows to Rapid Bay for their toughening up. And one can only hope that truck pulling holds premiership points. Onto the Foster's Cup, and because of the shifting surface at Waverley Park, it was decided to shift a number of fixtures. One such move saw North Melbourne go to Adelaide, and in one of the most lopsided games in the Cup's 16-year history, the Roos were battered by 147 points. Modra in front of Martin. Martin, a good spoil. Modra recovers. Gives the handball. Magnificent footing of McGuinness. Gee, it's good to watch. This led to the resignation of North coach Wayne Schimmelbush. Dennis Pagan was appointed his successor and was confident the ruse would improve. The players that we've got here are good enough to be successful this year. Um, I'm certainly aiming to make the final six. The whole structure of the AFL was put under the microscope by an independent consultant, David Crawford. He pushed for an extended commission in his report. He also pushed for a part-time chairman and present boss, Ross Oakley, retained as executive chairman. The cameras returned to AFL headquarters for the March draft. Richard well, Osmond, the talented but disgruntled lion, was snapped up by Sydney as the number one pick. The Swans getting some relief for the loss of Barry Mitchell and Ben Doolan. Mitchell was quickly dubbed the Million Dollar Man, as Collingwood agreed to pay him $200,000 a year for the next five years, as Doolan went to Essendon as pick number 20. The biggest shock came with Selection 12. The Bombers stunning everyone with naming Tim Watson. Watson had spent a year on television with us and making cameo appearances with others. The lure of the liniment proving too much. Investigations were to continue into the reluctance of Brett Chalmers and Nathan Buckley to take part in the draft. Buckley relented and went to Brisbane despite Collingwood's overtures. Chalmers was tied to Richmond but when it became obvious that he had no intention of joining the Tigers, he was released for the open draft and ended up at Collingwood. Football returned to Waverley Park. Paul Salmon crashed out of the early part of the season with a shoulder injury after displaying awesome form. Oh, gee, I hope that's not serious. 
Come on, Jared. What is it? The, which joint is it? Well, I'll go for the AC joint. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Robbo, because he fell right on the point. Oh. But on that occasion, I would have liked to see Turnbull jump in his path on this occasion. He might be all right. And talking of awesome, that was the only way to describe the record crowd of 75,000 on a balmy Saturday night to see Richmond beat three times night premiers Essendon in a grand final. A great match, and the Bombers made it again by 23 points. Puts it wide for Buick, he hooks back and kicks a great goal. Oh, roving by Long. He puts the hand pass up for, for uh, Hurd. Off the ground goes Hurd and kicks a goal. He's been brilliant tonight, he's kicked four goals, five. Marking contest, oh, Derek kick it at the back. This could be the sealer, kicks a goal. Essendon will win. Huge crowd of nearly 60,000 proclaimed the beginning of the 93 season under the MCG lights, and Collingwood delivered a promise of things to come. Distance will worry him. Still not, no advantage. Collingwood wanted him to be a goal-kicking little man. Now, will 55 metres be too much? He goes in short. Rock a good mark! Tell you what, he's fixed up a Footscray player in the process. Actually, I was looking around for Scott Wine. He was down behind. Leave that young fellow That's alone. Mansfield, I think. I think it might be Liberatore. I think it might be Liberatore. And he looks very limp. Yes, it is Liberatore too. He's in a bit of trouble, Tony. He should kick this from about 30 metres. The crowd tells the story. With the twin-pronged forward line of Rocker and Williams contributing 10 goals, the Magpies looked potent in attack against a Footscray side that showed little resemblance to the third place team of 92. A six goal third term paved the way for Collingwood's 20 point win. Rocket was a face in the crowd at Cadinia Park and Ablett was benched. The superstar duo took plenty away from the Geelong St Kilda game. The match was a beauty. Kick by Steele to centre half forward on the bounce. Oh, what a pick up by Mench. He goes back to Couch, he's cornered, off to Mench, 50 metres out, and Mench kicks another one. Mench was named on the bench, but his five goals made all the difference. The Cats by 24 15, points. 14. Oh, kick is on its way and it's good. Fitzroy fans could have been excused for leaving early against Carlton. Those who stayed saw a fabulous fight back. A seven goal last turn by the Lions, highlighted by a match winning goal from newcomer Michael Dunstan in the dying moments. Unbelievable game, Mitch. Dunstan is not. He was back there for 15 seconds without a card player getting back to guard him. It was on if Ruzi had have actually seen him in the first place. Gee, the tackle on McKay okay. was important. Wasn't it great? Yeah, yeah McKay was the player who left, left Dunstan to come charging he out. Had, he had to do it, didn't and he? And he had to. He had to back himself in the youngster. Dunstan, if he kicks this, there's six points in front. If he misses, they're one point in front. There's the kick. There's six points in front for Troy. Who would have believed it? The Lions' six-point win was the tonic the struggling side needed. At the MCG on Sunday, Modra kicked 10 against Richmond as the Crows soared to the top of the ladder. The Fosters Cup Grand Finalists produced a shocker against Adelaide, losing by 94 points. Row, centering kick, Modra, lovely take, well played, very good effort by Modra, class! In Perth, the Eagles unfurled their Premiership pennant and showed from the start they would be the team to beat in 93. Pass to Alessio, 55 metre kick, Sumich, good use of the body, ducks back, shoots at goal, it's rolling, it's rolling, it's there! Tremendous effort from Sumich! Essendon came back strongly thanks to Darren Buick, who kicked eight. At the other end, his efforts were nullified by Peter Sumich, who kicked seven from nearly 20 scoring attempts. His tally so far. The banana kick. Crowd likes it. Third of the goal on five. The value of a potent spearhead was underlined when Richmond captain Jeff Hogg kicked seven to demolish Brisbane in round two. Terrific when he runs. One out contest. Hogg from behind. What a mark! 
Well, that was the passage of the night, the punch down, the roving by Knights, the pass and the mark, and it has to be a goal. Five to hold. All the talk that Peter Dacos was finished went up in smoke as the Collingwood Marvel booted eight goals against Geelong. Have a look at this. What a great goal. He goes out wide. Oh, Richardson, who had a brilliant third quarter. Close to ten possessions in that term. Down to Dacos, who's kicked five. And he might make it six now from the boundary line. Loves them from there and gets a miraculous goal. While Dacos starred, the talk again figured around the genius of Gary Ablett. Can he go off the ground? He might have got that. I think he has. Yes, sir. Oh, big fly by Barnes. He's able to drag it down. Ablett comes out with a football. He can kick the snapshot. Oh, that's a goal. It's a miracle. He's put it through. Ablett kicked seven, was reported for striking Pert, and after pleading guilty, was suspended for two matches. In a round of narrow shaves, there was none more exciting than the Essendon-Carlton clash at the MCG. Dorotic, Heaver, could put a nail in Essendon's coffin, he does. A high floating kick, in towards half forward. Harvey, claim, ball spills free, Kranzberg! Kicks it up to within goal scoring distance once again. Kranzberg dispossessed by Sexton, taken away by Harvey. Harvey, shot to the goal front, hurts a chance. He's it's going to bounce. bounce through for a goal! It is a goal to Harvey! <laughs> well, this kick to level the scores here at the G. And he rarely misses these. And he doesn't miss on this occasion. Scores are level. Carlton led by 17 points with 10 minutes to go. Yet on the siren, skipper Steve Kernahan needed any score with this kick for victory. Well, what a scene here at the MCG. The ball with the Carlton captain, and he has to score to win the game for the Blues. And he misses. It's out of bounds. It's a draw. Oh, no. In Adelaide on that Sunday, 46,000 saw the match of the round. The reigning premiers from Perth had their colours lowered by the Crows. Modric continued his brilliant form, his six taking his tally in two games to 16 goals. Great talent. And that's a fine kick. Gray and Fitzroy came right down to the wire on Easter Saturday. And who should bob up to settle the issue than the Hawks? Dougie Hawkins in game number 291 was the match winner. They all flew, but it's a Footscray mark at the bottom of the pack showing all the experience is skipper Dougie Hawkins. But this uh, probably is most important kick. Certainly is. The Hawk goals and the Dogs go further ahead. Tony Lockett made his first appearance for 1993. Low this time. Had a good look at that. Handball away for Bowie. Bowie's kick up towards full forward. Lockett. Brilliant. Absolutely vintage Tony Lockett. He That's kicked eight Bowie against the poor old Sydney Swans. Helped the Saints to a 38-point win. Would you believe it? Had his picture taken. This tussle cost the big bloke a two-week suspension. <laughs> Not worth it, Tony. Three minutes, uh, or three, what do they get, uh, warning? Yeah, oh, but uh, oh. Peter, look, gee whiz, he's such a valuable player for St Kilda, get out of it. Yeah, they should drag him off, uh, his teammates. On a roller coaster ride between lowly Brisbane and Melbourne, the fortunes fluctuated wildly. Buckley from 50, brings it back towards the square, over the back, Murphy kicks and kicks a goal. 26 points up at half time, the Bears just stood back and watched Melbourne belt home 10 goals. It was intercepted by Matthew Phoebe right on 50 and bangs it through for a goal. The Demons on the way back. Taken by Obst. Obst trying to get in a quick hand pass. Still a chance. Neats good play off the ground. Healy shuffles it out. Glenn Lovett bumped as he kicked it. He's put another one through. Melbourne hit back. With Roger Merritt chipping in with six, Brisbane stormed home for a most improbable win. And he can give it to Lepic if he kicks it now. No, good thinking. 
Bears kick five. The captain of the Brisbane Bears. They want this goal. It's a magnificent kick. I think it's a goal. Yes. A crowd of 87,000 spurred Collingwood's million dollar recruit Barry Mitchell against Essendon on the Monday. Wanganeen gets clear. Harvey in trouble. Oh, they're putting some good pressure on the Collingwood forwards. Chris Danaher hemmed in. Mitchell. Left foot snap by Mitchell. Is a great kick. It's a goal. High kick, which way will it bounce? Favourably for the Pies. Oh, Mitchell's in the thick of things again. This time he gives it to Francis. He heads for home, and he's kicked one. Magpies off to a great start. For rookie Glenn Sanford, though, memories of the Magpies' 39-point win were a little shaky, as was he. Come on, player in a little spot of bother there. Is it Sam? Sanford, yes, yep. he came off second best there. He's fallen over, he's fallen over. He may have hit his head on the goalpost. No. Oh, he's gone down again. He's uh see gonna be careful there. For the thriller of the round, how about Carlton and Hawthorne? Dunstall became the seventh player in league history to boot 800 goals. Jason Dunstall with 799 career goals. He and Lockett have been having a bit of a race to 800. Dunstall can beat him by three if he kicks this one. Yes, he has. While well, Kernahan had the chance to win the game off his own boot again. And guess what? He did. Oh, magnificent mark by the captain, Stephen Kernahan. Geez, Jay Peter, almost the same situation as last week. This one to put Carlton in front. Steve Kernahan. Kicks for goal, and he slammed it through, and the Blues hit the front. No longer the easy beats. A fired-up Fitzroy attack Adelaide from the start. Fitzroy go again through Jamie Elliott. He's still going. He's uh, pretty thin, this kid, but look at him. Oh, he weaves his way through the oh. pack, Elliott. A great oh. goal! Sensational play, Jamie Elliott. Enter. Tony Modra. Target is Modra. Yes! Long kick. Oh. That's a sensational mark. That is fantastic football. Three goals in an inspired three-minute spell before three-quarter time turned the game. Adelaide would win by a point. Wow, looks like Tony Modra's going to be the hero. This guy's on fire. This for number They've six. They've got Alistair Lynch to put there, of course. And they're doing it, actually. Tony Modra. Victoria Park. St Kilda won its first game on Collingwood Territory since 1976. Taken away by the brilliant McAdam. He can run right down, have a shot. Should bounce again. He runs to 50. Oh, he could have gone further, but tries to swing it back. I think it's another one. Five to McAdam. Harvey was a casualty, but the tribunal let them breathe easily when Frawley was cleared of a charge of flattening Christian. Oh, courageous mark, and he's down. Now. Winmar was outstanding, but he would become the focus of racial abuse and eventually fall out with the club over contractual worries. Winmar kicks. Oh, I think he's goal. The Saints are home. In Sydney, the big loser was coach Gary Bacanara as he watched Essendon demolish the Swans by 86 points. He admitted the club had hit rock bottom and was promptly sacked. The hand pass too severe. Malakalis intercepting his Buick. Here's another one. Meet Adrian McAdam. 98th in the 92 draft, the kid from Alice Springs sparked North Melbourne with seven goals on his AFL debut. Sets it up for a fantastic last quarter way, punch away from the pack. Here he is again, McAdam, Adrian McAdam from South Alice Springs. Goes at goal, and he has threaded it right on the siren. He helped fellow forward John Longmire aspire to new heights. Stevens over the top cleverly. As the kick from Larkin, Matthew Larkin. Oh, oh. fly. I think it's a mark. Oh, look at that by Longmire. Footscray found West. match winners in newcomer Scott West, who kicked six, and Danny Delray, who also kicked half a dozen, and a 46-point win over Essendon. Showed great courage to put himself into the contest. West, oh, skillfully. West for goal number five, personally. 
Yes! William Clark. Little Tony Liberatore had his number taken for Neen Gavin Wanganeen. The 1990 Brownlow medalist was cleared to his immense relief. Tingay sealed the Demons' stunning win over Adelaide, inflicting the Crows' first loss of the season and Melbourne's first win. Up the ground, it's a goal! Tingay! Tingay, a goal! And how about Greg Williams? Not one, but two 50-metre penalties led to the former Brownlow winner being dragged by coach David Parkin. Just a young man, 50 metres against Williams. A little bit of frustration there from Greg Williams. That could be another He's 50. Got another 50. He did come back and had 45 possessions. He was too good for St Kilda. Oh, well-weighted kick onto Williams. Oh. Turns in a threepenny bit, kicks at goal and gets it. I think Jared liked that one, Peter. Greg Williams gets his first goal. With nine goals in the second quarter, Brisbane was on the way to an upset win over Geelong. Gets it across to support. The kick looks pretty good. It's a goal. He's got the ball about 60 metres out from goal. He settles, goes long down towards the kickoff line. Ablett up oh. the top. Well gassed him. Ablett kicked eight of the best, but in the end, it was this point by the skipper Bairstow that gave Geelong a one-point win. He finds something in those tired legs. He can. He pumps it in towards full forward, and his score will do. A point, a point for the Cats. With 20 seconds remaining and counting down, Geelong leads by one solitary point. The biggest crowds to ever witness a home and away round were treated to a great opener. The Hawks with Dunstall kicking nine goals, defeating Adelaide at Football Park. In terrific form this year, no big bags, but he's been most consistent. Great kick, straight through the middle. At the other end, Modra was doing his best to lift the Crows. It was a tough ball to control, well played Modra. Jenky with him, very well played Modra. Brilliantly played a goal. What a bit of footy that was. In the end, though, Hawthorne made up for its poor form of late with a 17-point win. Platten just handed it off quickly. Now Hudson from Hall, bang goal. A beauty. A beauty. The next day, we saw a goal-kicking feast. The incredible Gary Ablett kicked 14 goal seven in a losing Geelong side. Hules or Hurd, Ablett. Snap. Number 10. And off the left foot. Oh! Oh! At the other end, not to be outdone, Paul Salmon kicked a useful 10. For Salmon, and he gets the goal. Grenvold's kicking towards full forward, looking for Salmon. He does well, does very well, does extremely well. Magnificent stuff by Salmon. Gavin Wanganeen also thrilled the 46,000 fans. Not bad. Looks oh. for him. Oh, Wanganeen! What a spicky! Sydney's 20th straight loss was highlighted by North Melbourne's opening quarter. Here's Allison. Left foot. Good kick. Is that a goal? It is. A freakish goal. Roberts. Schwass, well played. Now he's got a chance from here. Goes for it. Bang! And puts it through. That boy McAdam kicked 10 goals. His tally in two rounds, now 17. Look at that. Oh, yes, sir. The ruse by 124 points. And for coaching aspirant Ron Barassi, the future looked bleak. And Adrian McAdam, well, I think he's going to kick his tick. Well, I agree with you with Rock. But this young player, goal number 10, double figures in his second game. He kicks and he's put it through. 86,000 at the MCG rose as one as Stephen Silvani took the mark of the day. Oh! That's the Silvani we know. But in the oh, end, it was Collingwood's game. Overwork. He bends this back nicely. McGuan's at the back. Good night, Blues. That's how it finishes on most of those. Russell to Brown. To full forward. Dorotich. I want to be a rocker star. Yes! The contractual haggles that saw Nicky Winmar sideline for a second game began to play havoc with St Kilda's on-ground performance. Despite nine goals from powerhouse full forward Tony Locker, St Kilda looked apathetic in its 32-point loss to Richmond. For the fourth time this season, a kick was the final margin for Fitzroy. Fortunately, against Melbourne in round seven, it resulted in a one-point win.
Mick McGuan was magic for Collingwood in the match of the round against Adelaide at Victoria Park. Not once, but twice, did the magpie dazzle. Here's the head of McGuan. No one coming at him. McGuan from the boundary line tries to hook it back. A sensational kick, Mick McGuan, for a goal. Quickly an ordinary kick, a shocking kick. Straight to McGuan. McGuan dodging, weaving. Good play, Mickey McGuan. On the left foot, set sail for home. A beautiful sweeping kick. Oh, great goal, McGuan. The league's the leading goal kicker Central took the mark kick. of the round. Mark oh, oh, what a mark! <laughs> Modra would kick five goals, but in the last quarter he found himself dragged at the signs of benchwarming duties. Adelaide, by the way, lost to Collingwood yet again. North Melbourne were led from the front by inspirational skipper Wayne Carey. Pulls it back inside the 50, Carey again! And the umpire quick to pay a free, lately down towards half for Carey! One of the marks of the season without question. His 13 marks were magnificent. Would you believe it? The kid from well, Alice Springs, Adrian McAdam, kicked another six. He booted 23 in three games. And that was too much for Footscray to cope with. Gary Ablett chipped in with a couple of superb goals. And in front of a widely parochial local crowd, Geelong shot 38 points ahead of West Coast in the 1992 grand final replay. Ball rebounds for O'Reilly. His kick to full forward Ablett. Here's another one. <laughs> then the wheels fell off. Half forward. No mark taken. Picked up by Hines. His high kick in towards full forward. Sumich gets rid of Darcy and will kick a goal which will be his third. Just after Peter Sumich kicked this goal, he went off with a thigh injury. His departure was the signal for the Eagles' recovery. And what a recovery. They won by eight points. Following their loss, more bad news was to follow for the Cats. Gary Hocking was nabbed on two trial-by-video charges. He was suspended for one match for elbowing Guy McKenna. Following outrage in Perth, skipper Mark Bairstow was booked a day later. He received a two-week suspension for striking Jakovic. In Sydney, all they could talk about all week was the appointment of the saviour, Ron Barassi. The run-through said it all. But unfortunately for the master coach, his players didn't have the power to repel Carlton. A better performance, but still lost 21 in a row. Alden, 48 metres from goal, goes goal and kicks another one. Since Fitzroy's historic win at the Wacker back in 1989, the Eagles had won 14 games in a row under the lights there. On a Friday night in May, the Lions, with full forward Alistair Lynch kicking six, ended the run. Fitzroy by 18 points in an upset. It would make it very, very difficult. I know it's early in the last quarter. Lynch back, drop punt, good looking kick. It looks all right. Scotty Wind came to grief when Footscray tangled with Carlton. The Brownlow medalist was given on-the-spot treatment, as was Carlton, who lost by 28 points. Del Ray drops what he perhaps should have taken. Silvani into the action. Also there is Reynolds, West, Liberatore. Shot for goal by Libas, a goal! The Magpies showed that the curse inflicted on them at a bone-pointing ceremony was nothing to worry about when they met Hawthorne at Victoria Park. Despite losing 18 of their last 20 matches against Hawthorne, Collingwood was in stunning form. The three-goal result was just what the Magpies needed. Under Maguan. Mickey Maguan can go for home. There's the kick by Maguan. Goal right through the middle, and that's a sealer. One look from Ron Barassi was enough to know that the fairy tale outcome was still a pipe dream for the Swans. Lost number 22 in a row for Sydney was their worst. While Brisbane kicked a club record 33-21-219, established a record 162-point winning margin. Just about kicked this from 53 metres. Nathan Buckley, let's go, and he has kicked the beauty! And in Adelaide, Tony Modra took the mark of the round, in the match of the round. And to top it off, he kicked 10. That is the mark of the year. Adelaide had recovered from a 26-point deficit at the last change, to win by two points. Ramiro gets a kick out. 
but it's not clear enough. Rowe, he's kicked the full forward. Mudbridge got it, that was a push out. Going for 10. And he kicks it. North Melbourne regained top spot on the ladder in round nine with a strong victory over Carlton under the MCG lights. Carey was being talked of in Brownlow medal terms as he kicked five goals in the Roos' seventh win of the season. Here's Carey back on the flight with a chip. Oh, great play. Magnificent skill by Carey. He suckers it along the ground. Great play by the captain. The Blues looked terrible at times. Tom Dorotic summing it all up for the losers. John Dorotic. Oh, he's kicked it. He stubbed his foot in the ground. Oh, what a shocking mistake. For the second week in a row, Fitzroy underlined their new toughness. Up forward, Alistair Lynch kicked three goals in five minutes to give the Lions a flying start against Collingwood. And for the second year in a row, they proved too strong for the favourites. He hasn't missed on that occasion either. Derek Kickett came off the bench and kicked three goals in as many minutes to set up Essendon's 46-point win over Adelaide. Thank you, he says. We'll go back to the centre. But Derek will kick it. Derek Kickett goes for goal and bangs it through. You worry, Don. You worry. Back in the middle once more. Greenbolt down to a half forward for the Bombers. Long couldn't take it. Thrown out the back. Long. 40 metres. Caught. Kick it. No. Three and three minutes. Yes. Same ground. Next day. And Alan Jakovic showed just how exciting he can be. He can do anything, this fellow. You wouldn't count him out from here. The man for the occasion. He puts it through. Flamboyant goals. Booming goals. Goals that just made you want to kiss the nearest bloke. Lucky it was his brother, Glenn. He's given him a big one. It's a ride. It's a goal. A beautiful kick. He salutes the crowd, kisses his brother, and levels the scores. <laughs> oh, what a show. A six-goal last quarter wrapped up a great win for the Demons, and the Eagles had lost two in a row. The two Jakovic's almost on a collision course. Open goal odds. Advantage paid. Goal to Melbourne. It's all over. In Sydney, it was billed as the Gary Ablett Show. And with five goals in the first quarter, the Cats superstar certainly had Ron Barassi and his swans quaking. He'd kick seven, past 50 in only six games, to equal Pratt and Lockett's records. The crash of the year saw Richard Osborne go down. Still saw the swans going hard, and down goes Lynch, and down goes a Richard Osborne, is it? He was taken from the ground by ambulance, and his departure seemed to inspire his teammates. The Swans' 23rd straight loss was certainly not their worst. The rooms, but, you know, to get the ambulance out there, it's not a good sign. For the third time in nine weeks, Fitzroy lost by a kick. After leading Essendon by as much as 28 points, the Lions couldn't cover the revitalised Tim Watson in the dying minutes. Oh, terrific, isn't it? What a game. Nine times out of ten, Stewie Lowe reckons he dobbed this one. On Saturday, it was the odd day out. And his miss, it's and killed the loss to the Eagles by two points. This is close. The goal umpire's gone a long way behind. And that goal umpire has a sense of the dramatic. Adrian McAdam was a lowly draft choice. His nine goals against Collingwood equaled the record for a North Melbourne player against the Pies. And helped the Roos consolidate top spot with an awesome 83-point win, their best ever at Collingwood. While McAdam was just great up forward, Wayne Schwash put in a blinder. Eschenka has straight onto the chest of Schwash, goes for goal from 50. Not a bad effort. It's home. Beware the Hawks. That was the message after Jason Dunstall with eight and Paul Hudson with four buried Footscray. Now that is play of the year. That is absolutely magnificent stuff by Dunstall to get his fifth goal. Ruled out by some, Hawthorne now occupied second position on the AFL ladder. 
In a week set aside for the state of origin carnival, Victoria started in spectacular style by thrashing a combined New South Wales ACT side at the MCG. Stars for the Big V were Paul Salmon, whose side up forward was always a problem, and Gary Ablett, a remarkably versatile Geelong superstar. Salmon 6, Ablett 4, Victoria by 65 points. South Australia were at home to Western Australia in the first real state of origin match between the neighbours. The Crow Eaters, with Modra kicking five, won their way through to the final with a six goal victory. A dismal crowd of just over 30,000, some 50,000 less than hoped for, reacted to high admission charges and a late start for the final at the MCG. The pace of South Australia, the goal kicking genius of Darren Jarman, and the steadiness of veteran forward Steve Kernahan proved too much for Victoria. Six for him eventually. Hand pass further infield. Bradley runs to the 50 metre line, but gives the hand pass away and sets it up for Tony Hall. He doesn't miss these. Straight through. McDermott beats Gavin Brown and kicks in towards centre half forward. Marking contest. No one can control it. Back goes O'Donnell. Kick off the ground by Jarman as a goal. Miraculous. Apart from Ablett, who kicked five memorable goals, Victoria was outplayed. Salmon at full forward was kept kickless. He kicks towards goal. Hannah May Salmon at Yes! Disaster two when Ruse was felled. A compound fracture of the jaw would sideline him for at least six matches. And on the Sunday, Jason Dunstall revelled in his role as captain of Queensland. His eight goals paved the way for a combined Queensland Northern Territory win over Tasmania in Hobart. Good goal. One bright moment was this screamer for Phoebe. As he kicks up towards the centre. Oh, oh, what a mark! Goodness, man. It's mark of the year just about brought in by Matt Phoebe. And his brother likes it from the box as well. This was the halfway mark of the 93 season. Only two wins would separate the third side from the 13th. At the MCG on this long weekend, Craig Bradley continued with his impeccable interstate form. Scholl feeds it out to Bradley. He's been inspiring. Leeson, a little one-two with Bradley. Bradley runs to half forward, unloads from 70. Bacon, goal square, goal! For Carlton, he bobbed up everywhere in a great win over Geelong. Whoa, Bradley! What a mark! Richmond's fourth win came at the expense of Fitzroy, obviously missing skipper Paul Roos. At Waverley Park, St Bears. Kilda played host to Brisbane in Arctic-like conditions. The hailstones continue to come down. There's a mark taken by Pios. Well, the visibility is so bad, he had to put his hand up. Well, he can look. He's, me, got, got, it. he's, he's got his head down into his shoulder to protect himself from the hailstones. The ferocity of these hailstones. Now, I'm not exaggerating. I don't think we're all that far from snow, you know. Well, it's the... They're not uh, disintegrating when they hit the ground as Pios goes for goal. What has he done? I think he's kicked it. He has. Tony Lockett obliterated Brisbane. His 11 goals made it 57 in seven outings against the Bears. Burke goes to ground. Lockett is there. The big man has it. This is for number eight. Oh, yes. What a goal. Collingwood lost its third match in succession to Melbourne, the old enemy at the MCG on the Queen's birthday holiday. The Demons had seven on the board before Collingwood kicked its first. Alan Jakovic kicked nine in a magical performance. Jakovic on the turn. Jakovic gets his ninth. At Waverley Park, the young Bombers continued their winning form. Hawthorne was their fifth victim in a row. And for James Hurd, it was another pointer to the stardom that seemed certain to lie ahead. Played on. Hurd goes for another one. Oh, James, you're a little champion, you are. Jimmy Boy. What a great goal. The sudden death of AFL Executive Commissioner Alan Schwab threw a pall over the weekend's matches. 
The former Richmond secretary was found in his hotel room on Friday afternoon. He'd been in Sydney to oversee the rebuilding of the Swans. In Perth that night, the West Coast Eagles suffered their second straight loss at home, this time to ladder leaders North Melbourne. While the key goal-kicking trio of Longmire, Carey and McAdam were held to a total of six goals, Archer bobbed up with five. Plays on nicely to Allison. Goal coming up. Archer runs to 40, measures it and puts it through. It was a controversial finish. The Roos home by a hotly disputed goal. He hooks it down towards the kickoff line. Going back, Brennan got a push to it or did he? No, he did not. Not according to the umpire. Carey's kicked a long-range goal. 16, 10, 14, 9. Brennan thinks he touched it. I thought he touched it as well from here. So did I, to be honest. With wins over Collingwood and Essendon, Melbourne had suddenly emerged as one of the hot teams in the competition. Again, it was the brilliant Jakovic with eight goals who was the focal point. They bring the house down if he kicks it. Looks Not good. A bad kick. That is a sensational kick. Fancy following Geelong. At half time against Fitzroy, the Cats led by eight goals. In the second half, the Cats caved in again. He gets around one, gets around two, snaps it oh, but he pulled it too far. He might have he's got, got it. it, he's yes. got it. Oh, what a game. Big James Manson. Kicks it. Great kick. Point the margin. Oh. <laughs> it took this goal, number seven from Gary Adler, to steady them and allow a lucky seven-point win. Many of the 47,000 who braved the rain and biting winds at the MCG on a Friday night in late June expected to see topside North Melbourne end a horrific run of outs against Hawthorne. The Roos hadn't beaten their great rivals of the 70s since 1984. This was realistically their best chance. This could be the match winner. Not too far from home to say that. This for number five. Going to be close. I think he's got it. Once again, the looming presence of Jason Dunstall would stand between North and victory. With just a minute or so left, he accepted a platinum pass and threaded through his sixth. The situation is that North Melbourne at the moment leads by three points. But Jason Dunstall can change all that. He's on a tight angle, but he's only 25 metres out. He kicks for goal. Oh, he's a great kick for goal. The Hawks' 14th straight win over the Ruse. The margin, three points. Another landmark the next day, as Doug Hawkins finally managed to break the run through and enter the arena for his 300th game. One to savour for Bulldog fans too, as they beat Brisbane by 28 points. A huge milestone in Sydney, after 26 losses on the trot, the Swans under master coach Ron Barassi scored the win that ended the streak. It took a 10 goal bag from Richard Osmond to do it. The finals aspirants Melbourne, very bad loss indeed. Scott Doreen, Richard Osmond, he's got it. The full forward for goal number nine. Oh, he's close. Oh, it's a goal. Oh, Richard Osmond and the Swans day. Place to half forward. He can have a shot. He hooks it back. He's looking for Osmond. Osmond at the back as well. Oh, this is Richard Osmond. Stay. He's going to kick for goal number 10. This will be sixth goal of the term. Richard Osmond, goal number 10. What a great effort. Sydney won its first match since beating Brisbane on May the 8th, 1992. One look at Chairman Mike Willis's face told it all. A sellout crowd in Adelaide were treated to Gary Ablett at his best when Geelong made the trip to the Crow's Nest. Ablett kicked 10 in spectacular fashion, but his solo contribution was not enough to help Geelong to victory. Kicks and kicks truly. 10. The former ladder leaders Adelaide were again back in the top six. Might not be even there. Might for this time. Yeah! After the triumph over Melbourne, Sydney's winning streak came to an end against Adelaide on the same ground, just five days later. Now, Rowe should Shepard, Anderson should give it to Rowe, he does. 
Road to go for goal. He's usually a good kick. That's a beauty! It was, however, a costly win for the Crows, with Maynard breaking his collarbone. Robberan's season coming to a close with a broken leg. Oh, he's done him. Oh, oh he's in no, trouble. Have he's... a look at him. Oh. It takes a strong heart to follow Fitzroy. For the seventh time this season, the Lions were involved in a contest that was decided by seven points or less. Lynch was outstanding, and his seventh clinched the game, albeit by a point. It was the third time this season that the Lions had figured in the closest possible result. The MCG on Sunday, Richmond shot out to a six-goal lead in the second quarter of their match against Collingwood. Is this four for him? Oh, it is! Then they started being pegged back. Star for the Magpies was Rocker, the kick ten, to equal a record in matches between these old rivals. Kelly doing the ruck work, up against Gale, Tony Free, now Kerrison gets clear, gets his foot to the ball, he might have scored a goal, or has it come off Rocker's boot? That's ten for Rocker. On a weekend of great drama, it was fitting that it should close with a thriller in Perth. Carlton lost captain Stephen Kernahan with a knee injury early, but in a gritty display, inflicted the Eagles' third loss in a row at home. Williams kicked two vital goals in the last quarter. Even that might have been in vain if this shot by Chris Mainwaring, with six seconds to go, had missed the timber. Oh, he's hit the post! He's hit the post! That's it! It's over! It's over! That's it! Victory to Carlton! In a dramatic match here at Subiaco! Rookie Roo, Adrian McAdam, passed the 50-goal mark with six against Essendon. But for North Melbourne supporters, it was a night not to be forgotten. Trailing the Bombers midway through the final quarter, the AFL's top side staged a great comeback. They held the Dons to a goal and kicked eight themselves. North by 38 points. Astonishingly, Gary Ablett kicked 11 goals against Melbourne. And for the third time this season, the Supercat had kicked double figures in a losing side. Richmond led Footscray until three-quarter time, then stopped stone dead. The Tigers were held goalless in the final term and lost by three goals. What a goal! That's it! Anson Kilda put in one they'd rather forget. First they lost to Adelaide by 93 points. Mudra chance to shake off Frawley. He's got it! in his career. And then they learned that top full forward Tony Lockett would miss the rest of the season with a broken vertebrae in his back, courtesy of this collision with a goal post. This isn't the post, he touched the ball. In any case, it may have been going off target. It was a round that the goal kickers would savour. Tony Modra started things off with a club record 13 goals in a 139-point demolition of Richmond at Football Park. That's his 13. <laughs> oh, 13 with the siren sounding. Well, what a way to finish. 13 goals. Well, he may not be Michael Jordan, but he was Air Modra tonight. Bullis congratulates him. Adelaide finish on the highest note possible. And it continued on the next day. Verio Rocker kicked 10 as Collingwood raced to a 64-point win over Footscray. Oh, he used his body and he's marked. Severio Rocker, 19 years of age, 6 foot 5 for goal number 10. No doubt about it. Great effort by the big fellow at full forward. 10 goals. And at Princess Park, Stephen Silvani reached double figures too. His 10 earned him best of field votes and ensured Carlton an 86-point win over Fitzroy. With Lockett injured, St Kilda looked to 13 different goal scorers and a booty of 27 goals against Geelong. Craig O'Brien kicked six of them and Gordon Foe chipped in with five. For Geelong, it was a devastating loss. Melbourne's finals dreams took a battering when Hawthorne led all day to win by 16 points. Dunstall kicked seven. Up towards full four, Dunstall, great mark. Oh, that was superb. 
They needed the Hawks. They're in front on the board, but you feel that Melbourne's had more of the play. And Dunstall does not let us down. It's a goal. In the tightest match of the round, this was the mark we'll all remember. Where courage needed here. Oh! Wenderman showed 100%. And it seemed fitting that Paul Salmon should decide the outcome of the Essendon West Coast clash at the MCG. Now he's got to kick it quickly. Salmon is one out. He's got to kick it now while Salmon is there. He's got a chance. Salmon at the back. Oh, free kick, Salmon. The big fish had kicked seven straight behinds. And he lined up in the final minute. The Bombers needed this goal to win. There were nervous mutterings amongst the 44,000 spectators. To put the Bombers in front. Salmon kicks. It's good. Bobby's in front. It was enough to have coach Kevin Sheedy in a lather of excitement. Great performance of Bombers. I have never seen Sheedy like that except for those premierships in the 80s. Oh, what a great performance, Roscoe. A dismal first half by the top side on the ladder saw North Melbourne falter against St Kilda under lights at the MCG. Despite the twin-pronged attack of Longmire who kicked six and McAdam who added five, the ruse were no match for the brilliance of St Kilda. It's a goal! What a beauty! Nearly 70,000 saw Essendon veteran Timmy Watson at his best. The five-goal haul against Carlton at the MCG. Timmy Watson! Long receives from McCurry on to Timmy Watson. Goal number four coming up to the champ. Yes! Watch in the middle. Kick doesn't come too well off the boot. Watson, can he get his fifth? Chidi's baby bombers mark two and eased into third position. Second half fade outs had haunted Geelong all season. It happened again against Collingwood. Gary Ablett kicked five goals before half time. After the break, the Cats just managed to hang on to take the points. What a great kick. Ablett playing up the ground, not looking like getting the two for his hundred at the moment. Well done, Tudor. Yeah, a little backhand of yes. Gary Hocking. He start. approaches the 50. Goes long, Gary Hocking. He's kicked both their goals in this last quarter. Hawthorne assumed top position on the ladder and a healthy percentage boost as well with a 92-point win over Sydney. Dunstall kicked nine and Hudson eight. The poor old Swans managed only nine between them. Skipper John Worsfold played his best game for the season to spearhead the West Coast Eagles to a vital win over Adelaide at Subiaco. His four goals were telling in a 37-point win. Pittman, Evans off to Worsfold, his little kick for goal, bounces through. A massive crowd of more than 87,000 brave to wintry Friday night at the MCG see Essendon severely dent Collingwood's finals aspirations. Well done by Denham. McCurry gets it clear. Oliver Shaw. A kick to the front of the square. Out comes Kicket. Oh, Buick collected it. Snapshot by Buick. Oh, I didn't know you there. It's a goal. Coach Kevin Cheedy's 300th game. The Bombers simply outclassed the Magpies. Ten minutes into the match at the MCG, Gary Ablett took this mark. Honours the lead to the pocket. Oh, Ablett no, no, at the back. he's got it. No. <laughs> it's a mark. This for the second fastest century in VFL, AFL history. And there it is. Only Bob Pratt got there quicker, and that was one game quicker. Gary Ablett gets his century in his 14th game for the season. And despite the protestations of officials, he has been besieged by people here at his favourite stage, the MCG. He finished with 10 for the day and helped Geelong upset second place, North Melbourne. Ablett's in front. Oh, what a mark! What a mark! He probably should have 14 or 15 already. Ablett, goal! It's a great effort. Topside Hawthorne also fell from grace. The fourth time in a row, they lost to Carlton. First half to centre half four. Gow's in the front spot. Christo to Scholl. Scholl from 45. Drop punt. Scores a level. It's all square. And a couple of chances. Oh, look at this. Have a look at that one. Oh, a 
beauty. In Sydney, the highlight was the appearance of this young porker, proudly wearing the number four of injured and killed the full forward Tony Lockett. There is a pig at full forward. That looks like a large white land race cross. We have an expert in the field. It's a good thing you're here. He's uh, looking oh, he's for on the a pilot. lead. He's on a lead. <laughs> <laughs> Get the runner out there and uh. pick up the pig. Well, oh. <laughs> number four plugger. <laughs> oh, that's hard. It's only a joke, plugger, if you're watching. <laughs> the big question is well, who's going to tackle him? Oh, this could go on for some time. I well, know they tire quickly, do they? It didn't phase the Saints. The Stewie Lowe taking 17 marks and kicking eight goals. They won by six goals. Taylor in the middle. Everett's away. The big man loops up towards half forward. Can someone take a mark? Oh. Look at that. He's pumping. He kicks up towards half forward. Fode comes steaming out. O'Brien, the ball spinning, but he picks it up nicely. Goes with a left foot snap. Low. Yes, there's another one. Mark number 16. Goal number eight. Adelaide lost its 18th match in 24 visits to Melbourne. The five-point loss to Fitzroy was devastating. Play on says the umpire. Dunstan's normally a good kick and goal. He hooks it back. Oh, great attempt, Dunstan. I think he's kicked that he has. The Crows dropped out of the top six. And despite Tony Modra kicking his 100th goal for the season and becoming the first Crow to reach the milestone, there was little to celebrate. Tony Modra, goal number 100 for the season. He kicks. I think he's got it. Crouch well done, it. Anthony Modra. Great, great effort by the champion full forward. Here they come. Modra getting mobbed. And we can only hope from the Crows' point of view he doesn't get injured because this could be pretty dangerous, really. The sentiment's right, but really... I, think he, I suppose you could think his lucky stars is here and not over in Football Park because there would you be 45,000 of those fans. I think it's a shame it's not a football park. Mention must be made of Lynch. Six more goals took him past 50. Begs the question how many he might have kicked if he played full forward all year. In front of Smart, Lynch for goal number six, a vital kick in the context of this game. Alistair Lynch, he's kicked it. Six goals for the full forward. St Kilda's gallant run to the finals fell apart in the second half against Collingwood at Waverley Park. Leading by five goals at half time, the Saints gave the Magpies breathing space for September and they lost by two goals. Good touch, no goal! Goal! Stasevich on centre wing. Torpedo punt kick. Oh, Mickey! Cover yourself, son! Cover yourself, Mickey! Gary Ablett did it again. He kicked his weekly average of eight past the 700 goal mark in his marvellous career. He's kicked five for the day. It's close. He's got it. 700 goals to Gary Ablett. While he was thrilling patrons at one end of Cadinia Park, poor old Hawthorne were looking particularly sick. The latter leaders would face an 82-point hiding. 48 metres. Eight goals to Doc Wielden and the mark of the night to Alistair Lynch were two memories of Fitzroy's win under lights in Sydney. The angle is quite difficult. And he does a pretty Ooh. good job of this. It's a goal. Coming into the side at the expense of Zanotti. Oh, Lynch! What a beauty! She's wrapped! The next day, Kickett was supreme in Essendon's win over Footscray at the MCG. His eight goals enabled the Bombers to retain top spots. Races in the goal for his third. And he's kicked it. McCurry in towards half forward and breaking the shackles is Dean Wallace. He's moved, been moved to the forward line. A little chip pass, a push out on by Kicket. He's got a kick it. Derek Kicket for goal number eight. It bounces and rolls. Oh, oh don't tell me he's kicked this. He has. Goal number eight. For the first time since 1964, St Kilda beat Carlton at Princess Park, with Robert Harvey best of field in the historic boilover. 55 metres out, short, 
low, great mark. We've only six minutes before three quarter time. It's close, it's there. Spiral punt kick. Sexton in front, oh. Oh, at the back of the pack. Pekin could kick a goal. It'll be their first of the last quarter, it is! The West Coast handled the atrocious conditions in Perth superbly to beat Hawthorne and along the way thwarted Jason Dunstall's hopes of a century. He kept the champion goal kicker to one and left him stranded on 99. Here's Pike, the kick inside half forward, a pick up by Hedy, a snap, an unbelievable goal! Melbourne had one last chance to make the finals, that evaporated in Adelaide, but the Crows overcame terrible kicking to win by 59 points. They managed 13 goals from 40 scoring shots. To the half-back line, Anderson very strong overhead. Off onto the left foot from 60 metres. Greg Anderson, a booming kick at Anderson. Oh, touch to a goal, I think. Yes, a goal. Jason Dunstall's 100th goal of the season was also his easiest. He followed Gary Ablett and Tony Modra to the three-figure mark, emulating the deeds of Jezelenko, McKenna and Hudson back in 1970. He runs in, touches it down, here's the 100. He turns around and bangs it through, it's come early. Whoa. And a Hawthorne player slipped to ground in there, that's very dangerous. And that cord came down on top of him. What hope are those guys in the black uniform got? of controlling that crowd. Look, Dennis, they're running from just about everywhere on the ground. It really is a nonsense. Still, congratulations to Jason Dunstall. He's done it again. He would finish with eight. And in doing so, helped the Hawks to a strong win over Adelaide. Who sets it up for Dunstall. The pullback is down. Jamison Dunstall takes the penalty. Goes off the ground and sinks it. 85,000 saw Collingwood and Carlton fight out a great first half at the MCG. Handball's on in front of himself. Still going on with a little row. Brad Rowe on the left foot kick the ripper guard. Great play. As the clock ticks down to half time, Perth does the ruck work. Oh, he's hit it straight to Diesel. Williams a snapshot. Oh, what a gem! It's a goal! Williams kicks his second for the quarter. Kermahan stepped in and kicked seven, while the Magpies managed only one goal after half-time. Now he picks up well, kicks towards half-forward. Kernahan in front, has he taken that mark? He has. So for his sixth goal at 494 of his career. 48 for this year, he's accurate. Gee, that's not bad, it's a goal. There's Greg Williams. Can't trap it. Scholl has been a good player, and a clever hand pass. Heaver. Further afield, Tommy Elvin. The Blues go forward again. Kernahan's at the back. He might get another one, the captain. Goal number seven coming up. He stabs it. Yes! Great individual performance by Steve Kernahan. Geelong knocked Essendon from the top of the ladder and again showed they were the best side outside the top six. Bairstow does it beautifully with Scott. Oh, he might kick a goal, Robert Scott. 30 metres out and closing. A report and a subsequent suspension earlier in the season. Into the square. Oh, oh Stone, it was the flyer. Ablett is there also. Look at them like birds chasing crumbs. Oh, no! He's kicked that one. He has kicked a miraculous goal. The West Coast visited Footscray and hopes of the double chance were shattered. The Bulldogs won by seven goals in front of a poor crowd of only 12,000. Knocks it away. A chance for Grant. Gets to his feet, left foot. Oh, oh, what a goal! What a goal from Chris Grant. The injury to Guy McKenna just ball. compounded Jack Mick Malthouse's one. Goes to ground, gets to his feet. McKenna has the opportunity to mop up if there's been a free kick. Oh, oh, oh I think oh, McKenna's oh. hurt his knee. Oh, that's a bad one. Oh, he couldn't have. Oh, no. He got tangled up in the tackler and he has gone down and hurt his knee. Have a look at this. The whistle had gone. Oh, oh there it is. Well, let's just oh, hope that here, uh, here. it is the lesser of two evils. Certainly you would expect some uh, major damage to be done there. Let's hope it's just a week or two absence for Guy McKenna. 
On Friday night in Perth, Geelong had to win to keep its finals hopes alive. Good snap in towards Ablett again. In the right pocket. That will have to be special. Oh, the mark is taken. The kick is good and it's a goal to Tudor. That's a poor kick by Dean Kemp. Couch may make him pay. Djakovic, Ablett, Ablett will make him pay. And he does. Ablett kicked five. But his collision with the goalpost sent a shudder around the ground. Oh, he's crunched into that goalpost and he's hurt. He's hurt. And he's back. He's kicked a goal, Sandy. But he is in big trouble, Gary Ablett. The Cats, with a strong last quarter, went on to a win that would briefly put them into the top six. For coach Malcolm Blight, a moment to savour. Look at Blight with Bearstow. North Melbourne lost the match against Footscray, the double chance. And to see West on the end of it, snapshot with the left foot, will go close. Grigich again, well, can't mark it this time. Grant has kicked a beauty. And there's the bounce. One down by Ashenko. Atkins out of the middle, down towards half four. Thorpe leads in the race. Clean grab to the Grant. He measures the kick from 45 metres oh. and it's bending back. It's a goal. Oh, this is a feast at the MCG. It knocked it further forward for teammate. Martin is there. Griggins <laughs> pressuring him. Well done. Martin. Still. Loose ball. Grant. Snap. To cap off a horrible day, lost full forward John Longmire with a knee injury. There. Footscray defenders able to tie it up. Thrill comes up with a football, but it's going to be a bounce. And John Longmire, gee, I hope he hasn't done his knee. He's clutching the back of it, and that doesn't look good. Is Sydney not out of this? At Princess Park, Sydney staged to last quarter revival to level the scores against Carlton. Goes bang, let's lose, it's close. It's very close, it's a goal! Mm. Giving it back to Silvani. Silvani, oh, dangerous. It comes up though. Andrew McKay Go is gone. A bar calls play on. Who'll end up with it? They've got it. Rose, an open goal. Head pass, mid cutter. Oh, scores a lever. Who would have believed this? It was left to Rowan Welsh to kick the winning point and ensure the Blues the double chance in September. Oh, the Blues are going to get out of it. Well, this will be the last kick of the match. Surely a score. It is. Carlton have won. Whatever the result, the Blues have won. It matters not. There's a sign. The match that kick everything hinged on right was the final home Pitch and away of the season. Adelaide had never beaten Collingwood and had to win to clinch their first finals appearance. After a magnificent start, the Magpies stopped and were overrun by four goals. The Crows through to September from 55 metres, oh. a booming kick, right on the goal line, it's been punched away, lip to gather, snapshot, he's dumped it, Adelaide in front, oh. just a little kick near the centre of the ground, overrun by both Collingwood players, Fraser and Rowe, taken away by Tregenza, Anderson, Jarman, now Anderson again, little kick was good vision, McGuinness has got some space, he'll run up inside 50, Good shepherd by Wigney. The umpire didn't see it. Away goes McGuinness. That's goal of the night, if you don't mind. Emotional evening this one now as Wren goes up and thumps it down. Lip tack in the grasp. McGuinness again inspired his third kick of the turn. Mogra! His kick up near 50 metres. Bouncing ball. Awkward. Jarman controls it. Andrew Jarman's got another one. In front of only 29,000, the lowest finals crowd since 1944, the reigning premiers from the West Coast produced some of that premiership magic. Really forward in this turn, Stevens towards centre, half forward, what a spectacular mark by Waterman. On the receiving end was North Melbourne, the ladder leader for 11 weeks mid-season, but severely depleted by the loss of full forward John Longmire with a knee injury. To compound their worries, the Roos then lost skipper and most brilliant player Wayne Carey with a hamstring. Say, oh, what a blow this will be. 
Jakovic to main wearing carries and all sorts of trouble. Hamstring, I think, Bruce. That's that gather hamstring, I think. The Eagles have gambled on the fitness of Chris Lewis, back after six weeks suspension on two different charges late in the season. And he played a spectacular game. Waits for it now, turns around, goes for goal, steadies and puts it through. Shaping up as if it's a torpedo punt. Good looking kick, great goal. Last year's Norm Smith medalist, Peter Matera, reveled in the conditions, kicking three goals. 48 metres out, kick was smothered, Gotten had it slapped away, Matera with the outside of the boot, if you don't mind. For North, who started the season so disastrously, with a 147 point Foster's Cup loss to Adelaide, and the sacking of coach Wayne Schimmelbush, it was yet another disappointment. The Eagles by 51 points in this cutthroat second elimination final. For the first time, there was a finals match played at night. Nearly 80,000 arrived at the MCG in perfect conditions to see Essendon and Carlton in the qualifying final. The Bombers had been hard hit with injuries to six key players, including skipper Mark Thompson, and watched in horror as Carlton's danger man and leader Steve Kernahan kicked four goals in the first quarter. Up towards half forward, and it's effective. Now Heaver has an opportunity to go towards Kernahan. Kernahan, use of the body. One of the best matches for the season, scores were level at half time. But there's long brilliantly to Harvey. Harvey goes straight towards goal. Silvani and Salmon, punched away by Silvani. Buick off the ground. It's a goal. Magnificent Buick. Comes into half forward for Danaher and Kickett. They're both there. It's Williams who reads the crumbs beautifully. Look at that hand pass. 30 metres to Craig Bradley. He pumps it long in towards Kernahan and Danaher. Powell is there also, tucked in the pocket, he bends it round, and he's kicked an amazing goal. In defence, Gavin Wanganeen was superb. May make him pay. Oh, what a man by Wanganeen. That is just quite sensational. In a seesawing battle, Carlton fought back late in the last quarter, with the vision of Greg Williams helping Gleeson to a crucial goal. Williams, Diesel Williams clear, 48 metres, look at that kick, oh. that's a magnificent kick. He saw Gleeson. So this could well give Carlton a 10-point lead. And Williams up to 27 possessions. Well, he must have heard you. He shoots towards goal. And Carlton lead by 10 points. Despite a late surge by Watson, the Blues were through to the second semi-final by just two points. Madden can't take it. Somerville was at the back. Denham. Bob is still not done with. Harvey kicks it to the goal front. Marking contest here, Ridley couldn't take it. Watson kicks the goal! Timmy Watson's kicked his third goal. And by gee, this has been a game that everyone will remember. The side was sounded. The Blues have gone home by two points. And ladies and gentlemen, don't ever miss this. Back to the same ground the next day, and Adelaide made their finals debut after three seasons in the AFL. For Hawthorne, it was their record 12th finals campaign in a row. The Crows had only once won in Melbourne all year, but at half-time, led by four goals. Hawthorne might pay for this. Oh, look at this. Liptak, no one near him for 40 metres. Matthew Liptak races in the goal and says, thank you very much, and puts it through. The Hawks' fight back was predictable. Dunstall kicks six. Right on 50. Dunstall kicks. It looks good. He's dumped it. Five goals for the champion for Ford and the Hawks back in business. Hawks down by two points. 47 metres out. They're in front. And this miss by Platten was ever so costly. No, he hasn't got it yet. He's 35 metres out. John Platten has time to steady. Has to kick high. Dunstall. Point. It's, it's over point. the line, it's over the line, it's a score, a behind a plat. Steadying goals by the Crows gave them a red carpet ride through to the second semi-final. Oh, Liptak, dangerous. Liptak goes long, as long as he can. McGuinness is there, it bounces for a goal! Wren wins it. Tony McGuinness receives from Tregenza. In towards half forward. 
length of the big fist away. Still the Crows. Wigney. Now Nigel Smart. He's kicked it. Yes. Crows in front. Gowers takes the mark. There's the siren. The Crows with their own bit of history have knocked off the mighty Hawks. And in their first attempt at AFL Finals, they've advanced to the second semi. The finals were in full swing, and already two coaches had been axed. Jill Hawthorne Premiership coach Alan Joyce was stood down. In successive seasons, his Hawks had finished sixth. At Moorabbin, St Kilda sacked Ken Sheldon, a finals coach in 1992. On Saturday at Waverley Park, Carlton moved into the grand final with an emphatic second semi-final win over Adelaide. Williams has been pretty quiet. His left footer, oh, madness, 30 metres in the clear. Wren giving chase, Ooh. what a sprint. This is something to watch. Madden goes long for goal. He might have kicked it. Whoa. Sensational. I have never seen the like of it. <laughs> oh, big Justin. Oh, that'll bring a smile to Justin's face, I would think. And that's really rubbing the salt into the wounds. The Crows could kick only two goals from 11 scoring shots in the first half. And had no answer to Craig Bradley in the second. His tap out is clever. Bradley gathers. Now they're a chance to run it into the breeze. Bradley all the way to the 50, all the way to the 30. Craig Bradley goes for goal and kicks a ripper. Rusciuto overran it, this is to Ulio, to Ulio to Bradley, history repeats itself, he runs to 30, he may have kicked another one, his third. When the rain started falling, Carlton looked supreme, the win installed them as red-hot premiership favourites. Kernahan the chance, pushed Three. out, must be a free to Kernahan, advantage, it goes to Heaver, open goal coming up for Heaver, and now Bradley who kicks number five. It'll be tough for the Crows now. The next day, the injury-plagued Bombers started underdogs against the reigning Premiers from the West Coast. With a six-goal lead at half-time, Essendon were always in command. Jimmy Watson sprints in the goal, and the Essendon champs kicked it. Great Rover's goal from Watson. Hart and Buick, Watson, kicked a beautiful goal late in the first quarter, puts it high, be looking for Salmon. Yes, he's got it! Great mark! distance won't be a problem 30 meters out directly in front kicks a goal and gets it salmon kicked four telling goals the surprise package was calthorpe with three another player slips over oh gee this is calthorpe setting sail for home david calthorpe and he's kicked the goal 75,000 saw coach michael malthouse's gamble with less than fit players come unstuck and for the Eagles, fourth place would be their result in 1993. Stopped it! Great goal, the little rover. The bubble's on fire. Essendon met Adelaide in the preliminary final, and there were no signs of finals jitters from the Crows. Good spot there. Wren won the first tap out of the centre. Denham's quick kick would probably get the job to tag McGuinness. Visca gets uh, a kick away for Adelaide, a half forward, smart in the box seat, went with one hand, Grinvold on him, smart from 55 metres, centering kick to the goal square, not a bad one, Hodges sets himself, chance for lip tack, first goal round the body, looks good, great start. Essendon fans appealing for the free kick, no, look at this man, Nigel Smart, handball over the top, is it all right, Nigel, unselfishly, Smart will get the goal. Michael Long was one of Essendon's few winners in the first half. Ball wide for Long, backs himself. Tony Modra kicked five in the first half and overtook Gary Ablett as the leading goal kicker. No, he couldn't quite control the football. Neither could Nigel Smart. Chance for Modra, kick it. He does, and he gets it out of the Has he? Yes! Sean Wren took this. one of the marks of the year. He's kicked to about 30 metres. Oh, yeah! Little 
touch by Pittman was important. McCurry close to the boundary line. McCurry does well. Handball Salmon. Get the goal. In the second half, Buick kicked five, including this one from the boundary. A goal by O'Donnell put Essendon in front. It's the flow court, gets the handball away. Maynard gives it to Long, Long stages. Watson important, O'Donnell should go. Goes and puts it through. The Bombers are in front. The clincher came from veteran Tim Watson in the last minutes. Taken by Brown. Wengerman's got it. Did he have the football? One wonders. Away goes on a wing short. Two Wanganeen. In short, Watson. Shorter again, Mercury. No, Watson gets around. Forced to kick with the left. It slews off the side of his boot. Set a half back for Adelaide. Very important possession. Watson's got it. Watson goes for goal. Well, a marvellous final series. What about the qualifying final? The first night final when Carlton beat Essendon by two points under lights. And that preliminary final. Adelaide had the game won, but they were overrun in the second half. It started a big week for the Bombers because not only did they qualify for the grand final, but their heroic back pocket, Gavin Wanganeen, won the Brownlow medal. A terrific result for him. It left the big game of the year, Carlton Essendon, in the grand final. Fletcher to bring it back into play. Goes straight down the middle. Lovely kick, almost to the centre of the ground. Williams waits at the back, but it's uh, to his opposite number, Denham. In the middle. Now Michael Long. Look at this boy go. Away goes Michael Long. 50 metres out. Still going. 30 metres out. Oh, what play. It may have been touched on the line. No. One of the plays of the year. Brown, kick the full forward, Kernahan's got it, no mark, play on, Elvin, can't get past, well scragged, Kernahan steps off, Kernahan, Carlton's first goal. Bombers are making a change, Jared Healy. Watson off for Wallace. So Wallace getting his chance, the veteran Watson off for the moment, there's a lovely hand pass to Denham, Denham shoots the goal and pops it through, and he says thank you. Mackay chances his arm, he's still going, the young man, giving it to Hannah, Mill Hannah, cops one, he's down behind play as he gave it away to Hogg. Harvey, Hannah's in trouble. Let's have just a have look, a look at that. here, a big crunch there from Dean Wallace. And back with the live action, it's O'Donnell who has the football on centre wing. Hannah's still down. They may have to stop this game because he's uh, in that vicinity. The umpire says no, play on. Michael Long bouncing his way into goal. Long kicks and he's kicked it. <laughs> Salmon takes the mark. Away they go again. Hill will have to be quick. He is with a high kick up towards Somerville territory. Sandwiched between two Carlton players. Buick. Look at this. Ho -ho! The Bombers are hot. Excellent play there by Essendon again. Long just backs away. Have a look at oh. this. Take me on, take me on, take me on, he says. And still gets away with it. And pumps it to within 50 metres. Here, well inside. Away goes Chris Danaher. Have a look there. Brilliant football, Danaher. They pounce upon him as the ball spills free towards Bradley. Desperately, he tries to get through. He does. To the running Alban. Alban off to Kernahan. Kernahan. Don't tell him he's going to kick another one. Here's their sole man up forward. The Blues with the last two goals. Madden's dominated the centre. Away goes Calthorpe. They don't want this. This will sting. Calthorpe's shot for goal. It's on the line. It's through. Calthorpe replies for the Bombers. And another brilliant kick to the goal front. Spalding couldn't take the mark. Another goal to Essendon kicked by Hurd. It's all over. This is very fitting, Robbo. The Brownlow medalist. He won the Michael Tuck medal for being the champion player in the night series at the start of the year. 
And now he wants to cap it off with a goal. And he has. He has. That may be it. A fantastic win by the Bombers to cap off a magnificent 1993. Their Premiership win was their 15th, so they go level with the Blues on the top of the ladder, 15 Premierships each. We hope you've enjoyed the look back at season 1993. This has been a Seven Sport presentation. Australian Football Video presents Vintage Football from the Seven Sport Classics Collection. Seven's Magic Moments and the Sensational 70s. Football action to get your blood boiling. In Seven's Magic Moments, thrill to 30 minutes of unrivaled football history. From the brilliance of Baldock to the antics of Jacko. And the Sensational 70s. Highlights from one of Aussie Rule's finest decades. Magic Moments and Sensational 70s. Two magnificent Seven Sport Classics from Australian Football Video.